All right, thanks. Um, I just want to thank Matthew and Heather for, for um, having me here. So the title of my talk is The Success of Failure. Right? So this is just going to be like a compilation of stories of actually my students in, that I've had in college on kind of the impact of what they had going through failure, could be a good or bad thing, and just the effects of um, what happened to them. Right? So I, I'm going to talk about kind of a small scale um, understanding of like failure for them first. So one thing, especially in the STEM side of things, right? a lot of times you have to build intuition to understand problem solving or even going into research or just doing projects. right? But I think for a lot of students, when they first begin problem solving, they're really a scare, scared to try anything. Right? Um, they kind of see if you give them a problem, it's just black and white. Oh, if I see how to do it, OK, I can work through it. But sometimes you give them something, they don't know how to do it, and they get very scared um, to work through it. And so a lot of times when students come see me, they're like, oh, I don't know how to do this. Can, can you work through or like show me how to do this? Right? And I think if you just walk a student through a problem, right, that doesn't really help them build any intuition. They just want to, oh, I, I get the answer now. I'm, everything's great now. Right? So a lot of times they get frustrated when I, I say, I'm not going to tell you the answer. You have to kind of work through this and learn yourself. And it's OK if you mess up. Like If you go in the wrong direction, it's good to experience that. Because whenever you take the exam, you can't raise your hand and say, oh, can you walk me through this first exam problem? Right. So yeah, I had a student five or six years ago, and he came to see me asking for help. And then he would just show me the problem and say, I don't know how to do this. Right. So I ended up telling him, I, was, I said, get out a piece of paper, write down the problem first. Right. But I think, again, he said, kind of just sees this in a black and white way where, oh, if I, I look at it and I can't do it, I can't do it. Right. And so I told him, I was like, it's OK. Just tell me anything that's on your mind. It can be incorrect, but just tell me anything that you want to attempt on this problem. And so he just, with hesitation, said, I don't know. I could divide out by 7 on this equation. So I said, write it down. Don't just tell me that. You're not going to be able to kind of move on with the problem if you just tell me that. So he wrote it down. And then I said, OK, now what's in your mind? And he said, I could you know, add 3 on both sides. I, I, I don't know. And I said, OK, continue writing that down. And then after he wrote that down, you know, I didn't say anything after that. And then he wrote a, a few steps himself. And then I don't remember the value, but he got something like x is equal to 10. Right? And then he looked at me and just said, oh, because I think he was so surprised that he solved the problem. Right? I didn't give him any real help besides telling him, hey, just try it. Right? It's OK to mess up. But he was so scared that once I look at the problem, I don't want to fail at this. I don't want to like, make any mistakes that he wouldn't push himself. Right? So for a lot of students, I think they just need to take the time. You know, it's OK to fail. I've had students who start and tell me the wrong thing, but I let them keep going with it. Because I think it's important for them to learn that mistake, because it's good for your intuition to not make that mistake um, in the future. So my next story I have is actually kind of a funny one of how it ends. But this other student I had um, was taking one of my higher level classes. And he would always just come to my office, ask help on the homework every single week. But his way of asking was just like, he would give me the homework and say, oh, so for problem one, right, I should use pigeonhole principle, right? That's the way I should do it. And I would say, I'm not telling you. you. You know, you need to try it. So I said, go to the board and write out what is on your mind. And then it would take some time, and we would kind of get through it. But then immediately after, problem two, he'd be saying, oh, wait, so I should be using this method, right? This is what we did on Wednesday. This is exactly what we should be doing. And I said, I'm not telling you. You need to um, keep trying it. So I kept pushing him to kind of improve on that. You know, it's OK to mess up. We sometimes would take 20, 30 minutes to solve a problem. But I said, that's OK. You, know, you have to learn from these mistakes. Um, and that's what gets harder in the higher level classes is there, your intuition has to really build because there isn't one way to solve a problem or just three. There could be it, almost infinite ways um, to approach the problem. And so the story kind of takes a funny end to it because he's currently working as a software engineer now um, at Booz Allen. And he just a few months ago, he contacted me and a few students in a, in a group chat. And he told me that he was um, at a they were doing some training program for his company where they had to do some stuff with um, programming. And then he, he said to us, he said, dude, there is this guy in our training program. He's so annoying. Like, they give us these instructions, right? And each step, when they say, you know, right click on here and choose this on the menu, this guy always has to ask me, oh, wait, should I right click and choose this menu option? <laughs> and then after that, you know, he's like, and then they're supposed to type this in. And he's like, oh, wait, should I be typing this in? And, he's, and my student was just like, this guy, you know, why won't he try anything himself? And he said, like, why has he taught me to toughen up in his office? And he's like, why didn't this guy also you know, gain this ability? So it's just funny. I was like, the tables really have turned for you, you know, now. <laughs> this has happened. 
So I think there's also kind of the, the picture of like failing even in the, big, in the larger scale. Um, it's not just, oh, whenever I'm trying to solve a problem, I can't do it. You know, some students will fail classes or, you know, going on to the workforce, they'll fail also. And it's a kind of a harder impact on them. But it's also kind of a learning experience for them um, to have. So I think like perseverance, right? That's a very important thing of overcoming your obstacles. You may fail, but you can push yourself instead of giving up. And a lot of times, you know, I do see students who, you know, they have some difficulties and unfortunately, you know, they just give up because they're so used to being at the top of the class that they've never had this experience of doing bad. Or as many of you guys even say, you know, you hit a wall suddenly in your life. You suddenly cannot accomplish what you're trying to do, right? But it's hard to overcome that and that's where perseverance is a very important thing to have. And I had a student um, that I was talking to actually about this conference and what my talk was going to be on. And He's working right now at Facebook in Seattle as a software engineer. And he, he was saying, like, after he heard about what I was saying about failing and stuff, and some people who are very used to, you know, being successful and at the top, they're not ready to hit this wall, right? And he's, he said to me, he's, he said that he sees this all the time in his company. And he told me the story um, how he had a student once, or sorry, an <laughs> intern. So he was kind of a mentor um, working full time for the college students who were interning over the summer who are still currently in college. And he said that um, he had the student from, like, I think, one of the Ivy Leagues, like Princeton or MIT, you know. And I think he was very at the top of the class, could do all the programming, was very confident with what he was doing. Unfortunately, what he was working on during the internship, he was not performing that well on par with everyone else. And at some point, my student had to inform him. It's like, hey, this is not exactly what we're looking for. You need to kind of step up your game. Here are things that you should consider improving. But because he was so used to being, you know, so good at everything, gone to Ivy League, he felt that he's basically invincible. And this guy just basically gave up. Like, he didn't consider, you know, improving or anything like that. And my student actually informed me that he did not even show up for the last week of his internship. He just gave up and left the job completely. And so it's unfortunate, that, you know, that's where you, having the experience of failing and stuff can be very useful for you because you'll be more prepared um, for that. So the last story I have um, involves one of my other students who um, is also a very, very strong student I had. Their um, first year in college took my calculus class, which had over 200 plus students, and he actually got the highest grade in the entire class. Right? That's very exceptional over 200 plus people. And he also ended up taking um, one of my higher level classes and did exceptionally well. And then I think the student just feels very confident in what he's doing and has never, you know, I'm not saying that they didn't have to study or anything like that, but it's just they're very confident they were able to figure out um, all the issues they had. But then um, after this person graduated, they went on to graduate school in computer science. And they told me that during the second semester, um, the person took this class and then started to struggle, didn't exactly know what was going on, and then told me that um, he was probably going to get a B in the class. Right. And for some of us, I would think, right, that's, you know, that's, that's average. That's, that's pretty good, right? And he told me that with this B, he contemplated for over a week of just dropping out of the program completely, right? Which is, that's what we're saying, right? When you hit a wall suddenly, they're so used to the success, it's so hard to deal with this and overcome this obstacle when suddenly something doesn't go um, as planned. And so the kind of the main conclusion I want to put on this is just kind of two remarks, right? So the first one I want to say is like, through these stories, um, we kind of talked about, Sean talked about this, uh, I believe, yesterday, right? If you're like, involved in hiring, um, recruiting, you know, interviewing process, right? Sometimes don't look at someone who's perfect with this amazing CV, right? 4.0 has all this experience, right? That's good, but you never know, right? They not, may not be experienced enough that when you give them a project, right, doing the job, they may not be ready for it. And then they won't be able to overcome this obstacle. While students who are just doing average, you know, getting B's and C's, right? For them, it's like, oh, this is just another day in the office. I know I've struggled before. I can overcome this without an issue. Right. And so I guess the last thing I want to uh, mention is if any of my students are listening to this talk, right, <laughs> just be aware, like, it's okay to fail. It's okay to fail my class. You have to retake it, right? It's, you have to overcome these obstacles, and it's an experience to have um, instead of giving up. And if you feel like you're all alone, just to let you know, actually, um, two days ago, nearly everyone at this conference, we got together, and each person told a story of how they failed in their life. 
maybe even be on college working, losing their jobs and stuff. So you're definitely not the only person who's um, struggling. Thank you.